Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with... CJ Liu from the Fire It Up with CJ show. woo If you've ever wanted to vibrate high, no matter what, then do we have the Watching Your Energy show for you. Today, we'll talk about keeping your energy up, holding space for the negative, taking a higher perspective, and how to bring your energy back up after it's gone in the gutter. <laughs> that plus, we'll talk about... Thank God ceasefires, informational interviews, two mo tumbling, new work projects, tailgates on its way, new glasses, new shorts, setting up the new home, alignment with employees, and what in the world Mama Blue has to do with. So welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. Woo! Okay, Mama what? Mama Blue? Huh? We have our truck. We have our tribe of roadrunners that follows us around yeah. and comes to the house. Although we call him a he, but it's a her. Her name is Blue. And Blue will take little little snacks from us and then go run away and come back and run away and come back and run away and come back. And so about a month or two, we said, Blue must be a mama and must have some uh, some baby blues. And they showed up yesterday. Oh, sweet. So this is Roadrunner <laughs> Babies. Oh, but, but Roadrunner Babies. And you knew that they were Roadrunner Babies because she'd go and bring them food. And they would open their mouths, ah, ah, open as wide as they could for her to put food down their throats. And it was the cutest oh, thing Oh, how ever. big are Wait, so what are they? So, like, they're this big. Like, how big are they relative to your hand? <sighs> the body is about the size of my hand. And then their feathers stick out from the from there and back and their oh, head. Oh wow. Comes so they're the tiny. Oh so cute. Well, so that, have you made friends with all desert? Yeah, you've had roadrunners and then you've had um lion. What were the other ones that you've seen so we, far? We saw Upcat on one of the Bobcat. first few days. Uh coyotes as recently as yesterday hanging out by the R V which made Rue go, let's not go for a walk this morning. And I'm like, I'm down with that. <laughs> uh, um, we've had, um, uh, let's see, hummingbirds, blue jays, sparrows, eagles, hawks, osprey, uh, lizards. Have not seen the slitherers yet, although we see all the holes for them around. Rabbits, jackrabbits, uh, which are very different than rabbits. They're considered a hare and a regular rabbit isn't. I didn't know this. Um, I didn't know that. Huh. We haven't seen, there are, supposedly we are on a migratory path for uh, desert tortoises. We have not seen yeah. them yet. Um, and I'm not sure, I think those are the main critters we've seen around here, I guess. Yeah, it's a very different kind of life than when you were at your Colorado place with bears. Oh, chipmunks and squirrels. We have chipmunks lots of chipmunks and squirrels. And squirrels. You do. Oh, They're okay. They're in the house. And have are you been feeding them, and are they getting chipmunk and squirrel massages? Off the off the record, they're getting lots of chipmunk and squirrel love, but um, we have been hands off with them so that we don't fall in love with them. Oh, we're going to be leaving. Uh, we have not had that success with Blue, unfortunately. Oh, uh, but but our, our whole thing is. For them all to be self-sufficient by the time we leave here in a few weeks. So, okay. so we're helping with that process. I okay. Like that. And what's happening with your new home and, 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 and such setting up? We've been setting it up. Jessica has been really good at looking at the organization in this almost 44 foot RV of what she wants to put where, what, what are we using a basket here? Are we using a storage device? She's got blueprints that she's made herself and taken all these measurements. We've been to Target and Walmart. Maybe we'll get to a Bed Bath & Beyond with her trying things into different spots to see what fits most efficiently. We had over um, Tracy McCubbin last weekend who had... Oh, issue. right. How did that go, that organization coach? That was awesome in looking at what we get to keep and what we get. And she has Declutterfly is her site. What we uh, what we get to keep and what we get to part with. That was really fun and educational, and I think it helps us to let go of more things. Um, and we got to look at the space from a new set of eyes. Mm -hmm. At first, don't have that much space because it's a it's a radical de uh, downsizing. But the more we play with it, I think we have a decent amount. 
The biggest question is when we get to Colorado, will we want to take extra time? We have four more small storage units there. Will we want to take extra time getting down to just one climate controlled storage unit or do we want to keep a little bit more? Um, for instance, you just bought a king size mattress, a beautiful organic king size mattress. You can't sell them. Are you going to give it away or keep that when you come back? Other furniture we had for a house. Mm. Give it away, keep it till we come back. Um, just bought new wheels for a brand new or, or brand new wheels for a tandem. Do you keep it? Do you let it go? And so we're working. Initially, the conclusion is we'll let it all go. Now I'm not so sure. It's not a clutter issue. It's a, if we're going to settle down, whatever that means after the RV tour, then we'd love this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so is it worth letting it all go to not spend $100, $200 a month? Or is it worth it for us to keep it there? I can't answer that question right now. Mm. I should just give it to my son and he'll keep it in his apartment until you come <laughs> back in Seattle. Then you can move to Seattle and uh -huh. just take it all. Along with all the skis. I'm sure he would love to have the skis until that time. <laughs> we have storage up here. Oh, you do have lots yeah, of storage, huh? We do, yeah. But I don't know if we have... We don't have a house worth of storage unless we move stuff around. But, yeah. yeah. Anyways. Okay, so, wow. So, you've got your new... So, your energy going up and down. So, how is this correlated? How are all these things correlated with your energy? We are so happy for the ceasefire, and this directly relates. We are so incredibly ha happy that our team members, Anas and his wife, are safe. Oh, thank right. God. Yes. Thank God. Uh, God, thank God. And it was really touch and go when he lost some dear friends. Oh, no. So, and he lost his mentor, which is just crazy. Oh. Um, but with that said, it is interesting, like, Okay, you're going shopping for an RV. And and Tracy McCubbin was talking about the dopamine of shopping. We don't really get that dopamine in, anymore. It's like, let's just get this done. Right, right. <laughs> and when you go to order something online, I'm like, I mean, hey, can we just choose this, move on? Um, but you're going, all right, I'm decking out my RV. My friend's being bombed. What in the flipping world? Right. And so your energy goes up and down and you have to remember, I say have to, the game is to remember so that it's an energetic game and bringing it back and bringing it back because you get to lean into these things. But if your energy stays down, you're, you're helping no one. Mm -hmm. And so it's been being incredibly aware of our energy through this time, mm. even when we go down to allow that, but keep bringing it back to center. Mm. Mm. It's funny because I had um, this weekend, um, I've been taking a TUMO class that has stretched, it was like four months in a row, um, starting from January, and then concluded just recently with two other additional classes that would happen this past weekend. And, um, like when you do TUMO, your energy is like amping, you know, you're basically bringing energy into your system. You're, um, you know, Wim Hof, right? Some similar kind of thing. You're containing oh, yeah. it within a vase or like a small compressed little cycle and you're, and you are increasing it so that your Kundalini will open and you, you clean through any stuck or, untoward energy that's in your shishumna which is your central channel where all your major chakras are located that's kind of like the technical explanation but anyways you're you're amping up your energy <clears throat> your frequency with the intent of clearing stuff out and then um afterwards mm -hmm. um going through what happens is as you have the heat go through it it um takes yeah. the water and it melts and then there's this inner bliss that happens when the melting happens and you just feel like this inner serenity, equanimity that comes like melting down your shishumi or your central channel. So that's the whole intent of this. And um, as you can imagine, given the name of my show and given how the two of us interact, I'm a very fiery. So it doesn't take a lot 
to get me fired up. My kundalini is already awakened. I go up and my energy is amped up. And so I did, after this retreat, it was just a beautiful, again, a piece of beautiful teacher and a great retreat. And, um, but I found myself, um, because it's blasting through stuff, it's just, it's like taking, um, a a, a pond and, and stirring a big stick around it and just everything, all the debris that was on the bottom of the pond gets stirred up. And so it's just this like big swirl in your energy. And then your energy is big and it's swirling all the stuff around. And I'm in the habit of like doing the same meditation over and over again, because I'm trying to deepen. So then I would do more Tumo and it would take this garbage and it just twirl. <laughs> I didn't realize I wasn't thinking about it, but I wasn't thinking about the energy as a relationship that I'm having with the energy versus a process and tool that I would use every single day. So I, I was stirring up this stick, this Tumo tornado <laughs> full of gunk. And, and it was the last couple of days I was, I've just been kind of like, just like in a hurricane of confusion because already I confuse matters by taking the stick and stirring it and then adding more energy to it. It just kind of made everything more crazy. And so my teacher yesterday, and I'm, I'm only mentioning this for other people, including yourself. It sounds like you have this all figured out, but I didn't realize I'm like, Oh I'm wow. On the other side, we'll, we'll dive there. We'll dive there yeah. Minute. So then I was like, wow. I guess what I need, what yesterday when I was in this class, he's like, what you need to do is go back to basics, like ground, like get into the earth and feel the bliss and just calm everything down. So the thing you stirred up can integrate and, and, uh, be one with it versus like these little particles of dead leaves and twigs twirling around. <laughs> so that has been my own energy exploration and to not view, uh, you know, he, he had a really interesting point that he made during the class. He said that there's three relationships that you have with energy, energy as an external force, like something that's an it that is outside of you that you can feel and that is being done to you um, or a, a tool or technique. And then there's just like energy, which is you have a relationship to the energy, you feel the energy. So, um, and then the third level, so that's the second person. The first person is like, I am the energy. I'm the energy and we're one. And when I'm seeing the confusion and twirling, that's me twirling. I'm twirling with the energy and I'm relating to it with kindness, right? By calming everything down. But it's funny that, like I've always said, we never talk about anything about what we're doing, but I'm always finding that, like when I read, when you read that, I just started laughing because I'm like, that's exactly what I'm going through. So tell me about what you did to keep your energy up or hold it down. Like, what have you been doing? Well, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. The smushing of the truck a few weeks ago helped. <laughs> Okay. It, it was, I don't know if it was you, CJ, who, who, who mentioned it so, so perfectly, or if it was one of my coaching clients who said that I got out to the middle of the country. I bought this amazing truck. I bought this amazing RV. I wanted to have this experience of driving it home, kind of this celebratory thing of, I did it. We manifested it. It's beautiful. It's awesome. Woohoo. And instead, the, tr the RV was dropped on the truck. The truck is smushed in the back end. And I didn't get to experience that joy mm. of, of um, not a conclusion, but of so a celebration. I didn't get to anchor mm. this in. Instead, it was very sad. Mm. And it was very, um, sad is really the best term for it. Mm -hmm. And um, and it took a few weeks to heal and to learn more about forgiveness and the forgiveness really of being within oneself. And then coming out on the back side of that, there was such a sense of peace with what is. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about energy, a lot of what we're doing is holding space for both the negative and positive, allowing them to be together and having peace for that. So this morning, and we may dive into it in a minute. Uh, usually I have 
six what I call power blocks maximum that I can do in a day. Uh -huh. So it could be, uh, and, and I usually consider an interview more like two power blocks than uh -huh. one, or we can call it focus blocks. Uh -huh. A coaching session is a focus block. A class is more like two. And six is about the max. Five is really where I like to stop it. Well, we ended up doing some informational interviews with past clients this morning because we're looking at how we take things to the next level mm -hmm. and playing with that energy. And I ended up with either eight or nine sessions this morning alone, starting oh, Michael. at wow. um, squeaky, bright, and early. Wow. One after the next, after the next. But if you look at me, I'm good. I'm mm -hmm. actually really, really good. Mm -hmm. And that has been allowing into this energy and and really like you're saying grounding watching and and letting go so that it doesn't build up like you're describing this internal vortex or tornado or hurricane mm -hmm. i'm not feeding it along i sense it i ground into it i sense it i ground into it and so it's a watching for the energy mm -hmm. and kind of sinking, catching the energy, and then starting to buffer and bring it down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a moment by moment activity versus. It's funny because I was just talking to my son um, who who ju he he just came back from taking a bunch of final exams and he's all ramped up, and it's a very competitive school, so he really has to work hard, and it's taken a long time for him to de-escalate, and, and there's a fear that, and I think a lot of people who are high-performing people have that, if I de-escalate, I'm not going to be able to perform as well, so how do I, you know, get to this point of performing well at my peak, because stress is required in order to, like, sometimes stress can be good, it actually gets you at your peak performance, and he has ADHD, so stress and focusing and like you know it helps him but then it also it hurts because it's so hard to um ramp down and um i was saying he's like i just want to hit it and then and i was like honey but then right now it's so hard for you to de-escalate so how is there a way that you can hold both of them you know hold the tension when you need it and then really sleep when you really need to sleep, you know, to really let go when you need to. Because otherwise, if you're always on pushing, 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 it's like it's it, it, it's actually his adrenals are stressed out as a result. It's interesting. I've been using one of several mantras with Jessica lately, and I've been saying, what's going to happen with your when I'm so mellow? You can't take it anymore. <laughs> what's going to happen when I'm so relaxed and calm? That you go, where did Michael go? Where's mm. my hobby? Yeah. What I'm learning, and that is actually helping me get into that centered place. What I'm learning is you can flip a switch. You are capable of that. Uh -huh. I had, I think it was over a week ago now, so I may have mentioned it on my last show. I had like the um, the personal record, a personal record, a personal records on my bicycle for like the last decade or maybe much more than that, uh -huh. coming off of totally mellow, everything's calm and relaxed. I get on the bicycle. It's go time. <laughs> <laughs> Flip that switch. Well, because you have ADHD and too. It's like, like the focus, right? Realize. Yeah. Yeah. So, or, or had, I would say, I think we can completely rewire our minds. Uh -huh. so I was the poster child for diagnosed at five, again at seven, one of the early adopters to Ritalin for years, back, uh, stopped it at puberty, back on it in um, grad school with Adderall and you name it. Um, but then I started rewiring and playing with it. And what I now understand is that it's not that it's there or gone is that we're a battery. And so if you realize that you're a battery, then what you're doing is you're able to focus that energy and funnel it into your C battery, your D battery, whatever casing you want to put in that battery, <clears throat> a nice lithium ion battery. And then when you want it, it is on demand, but it is more of a focused and concentrated energy rather than all over the place. Because if you're saying being ramped up, I'm afraid if I ramp down, I won't be able to ramp up again. 
well, you're ramping up. Energy is barfing out all over the place. Or I had an interview with a marketing gentleman earlier today, like I said, eight or nine <laughs> power blocks today. Um, and he was calling it leaky buckets. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when your energy is just going, like, it's actually exhausting. It's really exhausting. And so if we can learn how to idle the race car and then take the, the air race car has, well, I'm going to, this is going to kind of butcher the analogy or metaphor, but say it has an alternator and a battery. It's now charging up the battery. So you haven't completely shut off the car. The energy is still there. All you have to do is tap enough. It's charging up the battery so it's there the moment you need it. Yes, yeah, it, it, he'll love it because he's been talking to me. Yeah, he's been talking to me about kinetic and, and potential energy. That's what it is, right? It's like you're storing the energy. It's because he's been loving physics and uh, that's and he's been talking about kinetic and potential energy. So I'll have to tell him that that's kind of a, a way of thinking. So if we want to go with kinetic and potential energy, he's gently moving the stone uphill at the space, the speed the stone wants to go at. We're storing the battery at the space that the battery wants to start down. And then when he flips the switch, it can come back down the hill mm -hmm. or the current can be in the way that he wants it. If you try to feed a battery too much too quickly, you blow the battery, you overheat the battery, or you overheat the system. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I've been looking at a new watch. I haven't gotten it yet. I probably will. A new Garmin that measures different ways that it shows you your energy levels. I'm continuously playing with my chi and saying, what do I have in the tank? So let's say that it's been a day of big bombing challenges over the last couple of weeks. And I can feel I take emotional hit from it. Let's get myself to bed a little bit earlier. Let's not focus on the heavy stuff. You're supposed to go out for one heck of a bike ride. Let's throttle back. Mm -hmm. The next day you're feeling better. You feel into it, sort of like kicking the tires on a car or an airplane, a, a airline pilot going around and checking his whole airplane. You check in with where my energy levels are at. So right now you're swirling. Well, you're doing better now, but you are swirling hurricane. Now's not the time to step on the gas. The leaves are already blasted through the air. It's a time to ground and allow the waters to settle. Once they're settled, decide how much you want to kick up that debris and then allow it to settle again. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, when I was doing my automatic writing, um, what I heard was like, I'm trying to figure out if I should do this because, you know, it's, uh, something is in the air now and now opportunities like I remember I said I was just waiting and waiting and been waiting and I've been waiting for something and I didn't know what the thing was and then and then it came like a big there's an opportunity to do leadership coaching at Amazon and like it's like gonna be from July to December and it's like okay there's the thing I've been waiting for I didn't know what it was but I kind of didn't take anything on but I sort of took something on a little bit and now I'm like oh no now what do I do and um and then just kind of waiting and letting the um dust settle because when you make a decision in a hurricane it's probably not the right decision and so it's not only watching your energy but at least for me, what I what I got from my automatic writing myself is like it's it's taking a nap if you need to take a nap, which was happening to me a couple of weeks ago where I would just take these long, unusually long naps that were totally mysterious to me because mm -hmm. I've never taken naps. So it's take a nap, right? So that you can store the energy in your system, and then also don't make decisions. Like don't go be make go go <laughs> making some big decisions during that time. Just let it rest. Don't even try to think about what de what the decision is. Just let everything rest and then come back and then, you know, do your inquiry. But wait until every the dust settles. Um, I think that that was one thing that would be a different thing that I did this time than what I've done in the past. Um, so I, I do think it's interesting holding space for the energy. And I think taking a higher perspective doesn't necessarily even mean ramping. Because I think the weird thing about energy is that we think about 
higher vibration as having um, a higher perspective, but it may not be that the amped up higher energy is necessarily the better energy. Does that make sense? Because in I've heard in spiritual terms, people are like, oh, you need to amp up your vibration. And it's like doing this two most stuff, you know, like getting your energy up higher. But for me, because I'm very high energy, it's, it's not, that's not, the, that's not maybe the best thing for me to do. Okay. I'm going to put this in the kindest way that I can because I love everybody and I love Wim Hof. Mm -hmm. and, and Wim Hof has a lot of energy flowing. When I had Wim Hof on the show, he was a beautiful, loving nutter. <laughs> Too much energy. So we get to ground into it. And he's an amazing human. Be picking on him in the least. I'm just stating that his energy was boom. And the more we can bring that in and then bring it out and bring it in. This is the whole yoga tension release thing. Tension relaxation. To me, energy, if you want to talk, I'm, I, I, for some reason I want to stare at my air conditioner heater unit um, whenever I think of this. Electricity is positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. At least that's alternating current. Nothing actually going anywhere. It's just the flipping back and forth that creates incredible movement. Mm -hmm. And so we learn how to play that flip. And I think it makes us so much more powerful. I that's think so what too. you're doing. And that's why you were encouraged to take the naps. Yeah, and I think it's it's going back to the third person, second person, first person. If if you're in the world in which we live in, right, where more is better. More energy, more energy, more energy. Give me more energy. You know, it's like you're it's a it's a it's a thing outside of yourself and you're stockpiling it like toilet paper during COVID. Like we just stockpile this energy, hoping that more is better because we'll be vibrating higher and like higher is better, you know. But I think that it's it it's relating. It's very different than relating to the energy. Like, where does my energy feel now? What feels good to me? I have to tell you. Yesterday, after I drank two cups of coffee, and I was like, I don't even know who I was talking to. I could tell that they were nervous because oh, no. I had. I'm like, I'm already fiery and amped up. Me on two cups of coffee and fiery and amped up and in the stirring condition, I think I terrified this person. But, you know, it's like the way I was <laughs> relating to the energy is like, give me more. It, it actually wasn't even give me more. It's like, this is what I'm just doing. This is what I'm doing now. And like, and I didn't realize that, I mean, it has the way that I was relating to it as an object versus relating to it this morning or with my new set of eyes, like, okay, where am I? How can I relate not only to myself, but others in a different way? And when you merge with it, then um, like you're what, the way that you just described it, it's like you're taking that light that's inside of you and you're not necessarily even pushing it out. It's just like shining through you it, 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 because you are the light and it's one with you versus like, I have a flash, I've been building up a little tank of energy and I'm a flashlight <laughs> versus kind of like, I'm, I have the light inside of me and it just like radiates out of you. That's what I see as the difference. Just as you're saying about the light shining through us, if we realize that we, we are an unlimited source of energy, we are the universe. The universe is within us. If we understood, I mean, just forget about going to, to quantum physics. If you just go to a basic atom and you crack the atom open, that's the nuclear bomb. We have all the energy we need inside of us, or all the energy we need inside of us and more. So the challenge with external energy, whether it's the challenge of caffeine, whether it's the challenge of, I'm just going to listen to spiritual shows until I, wee. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like a little bit of groundedness. I'm going to equate these things, external energy, to sugar. Mm -hmm. And when you, you come off of sugar and then you have sugar, you feel sick. Mm -hmm. You feel really, really bad. 
because you have all the energy inside of you and getting the external source really rocks the boat. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes a matter of learning how to turn in to uh, tune into or turn on the, the energy that's inside of you and focus that rather than to grab on more and grab on more and grab on more, which makes you spun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a perfect way of describing it. Yes. So, so we step away from the juice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Michael, what are we missing in the next three minutes? New shorts and glasses. We can handle that, can't we? Well, uh, new shorts is just about is, is about playing and having fun, upgrading what I'm doing right now. The new glasses was getting new glasses for the trip. Also about challenging myself, upgrading, seeing how things are. It's interesting. I went on a shopping. I'm not a big shopper, but there's a lot to get for this trip. But I went on a shopping hiatus when Honest is stuck with the bombing. Mm -hmm. It just it didn't feel right i don't know how to describe it to be going why am i focused on this when there's that going on and mm. so the best i could do was say let's hold off on that and just bring it back to center right now mm. the last thing i would cover is we are doing more hiring here at inspire nation and we have been for setting up what i call our dream team mm. and it has been getting an energetic alignment and finding the people that have the experience, that have the knowledge, and have the energy that relates with us best. And so everything is about taking it to a new level by focusing on the energy. Nice. Okay, cool. So it's all about the same thing. And it's, well, what's interesting to me that you're saying is that you're taking the same thing. It's like expanding the conversation to the next concentric ring. We've been talking about individual energy and going out, and now you're talking about organizational energy, right? It's like, what is the organization and what is in the nucleus of this organization and how are you going to anchor it in and then grow it and expand it? And if you're all in alignment, there is an amplification of that energy inside. Um, so that's how I would see it tied together. You put it much better than I could put it, which why it may be why you're going to be working with Amazon. This <laughs> fall, <laughs> quite possibly. I, I would just encourage how can I ground into this, but I could hear it coming out of you already and you know it. <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, I think it's going to be really, I, I really enjoy that you're doing this and I think it will be really interesting to have your, this dream team has been, it, you planted the seeds for this dream team probably, um, I would say a year ago, a year or two ago. And so it's finally blossoming. Your garden is blossoming with all these people. It's really exciting actually to see. And when we go and we do a hiring process, what's been interesting is we've been getting far less candidates. Mm. And yet you wait for it. You wait for it, you wait for it, and you feel in, and it might take a step or two or an iteration or two, but the right one appears without rushing, without hurrying, without forcing, without pushing, without going, is this the right ad? Is this the right thing? No, it'll be there, and like attracts like. Hold the energy, they will appear. Yeah, it's hard to be patient. It really is hard to be patient, but it, I mean, I've been waiting for almost... I'd say nine months. I'm like, I'm not supposed to do anything. I'm supposed to heal. And that's the thing that I'm supposed to do. And I'm supposed to heal, 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 heal. I'm like, am I done yet? No. Am I done yet? No. I'm like, like you'll know when you're done. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Just waiting. It's a really, it's a very hard experience to really flow with the divine because you have to be extremely patient. And as you said, it, it may not look like, I mean, I would say the thing that I'm also working on is this like, small group that I'm bringing together and it, it feels right, but then it doesn't, it, at moments it doesn't feel right. I'm like, or is that because it doesn't feel right because I'm turbulent or is it not feel right? I don't know, but you have to, t if you take things slowly, you'll have enough data points and information to know. But it, again, it's patience, like even rushing group work, you can't. You know, like you said, you've been thinking I like you've been thinking about this dream team planting seeds a year ago and it's finally happening now. It takes time. 
to grow your garden, right? I mean, if it's the garden you really want, and to pull out the weeds, right? So it's it's a it's a hard you process. Can't see any of it if the water's you can't see any of it if the water's stirred up. Yeah, absolutely, or full of garbage, <laughs> which is what my water is full of coffee. So that's all I got, Michael. How about you? <laughs> Become aware as you're listening to this. Check in with your body. How does the energy feel? Do you feel grounded? Do you feel spun? Do you feel amped up? Do you feel sleepy? And the more that you touch base and start to ask yourself about that, the more you become what I call an inner Tai Chi master. Mm. Or, or if I gave Disney's okay with me saying it, an inner Zen Jedi master. Mm. The game is not so much played out here as it is played inside. And when you play the game well with your energy inside, it will then reflect on the outside. Woohoo. <laughs> so far, everyone out there. <laughs> it seemed inappropriate to go, woo! That was perfect. I like it. You're hired. <laughs> I'm going to wrap it up. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and... CJ Lou from the Fire It Up with CJ show. <laughs> Be well, have fun, watch the energies. Ah, oh, heck, stir up the, the mud, have a party. <laughs> and then when you're ready, come back to earth. And above and beyond all else, shine bright. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>